<laughs> and we're back. <laughs> I think so anyways. So come on back. Thank you if you uh, thank you for uh, letting us have that little break. Hopefully things are a little less glitchy now. Um, yeah, glitchy. Perhaps that can be a word of the day. Glitchy. Yeah. So folks, if you're over waiting for the other, I don't know, the other post, I might have to yell down to Anthony to let you folks know where to be. Um, welcome back. Or welcome for the first time, if you're just tuning in now. Um, we had a little uh, thingy thingy, so what am I going to do here? Let's see. I'm going to let Anthony know. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Now just imagine there's lovely music playing here, like elevator music. Oh, you're back! Okay, good. I found you. You found me. That's all that matters. That's perfect. <laughs> Um, yeah, glitchy. Glitchy is the word of the day. Glitchy for my brain, a little glitchy for my heart. Not necessarily in a bad way. I'm just aware. I'm noticing it. Hello, Shelly. Welcome back. Hopefully Savannah will be back soon. Uh, hopefully everyone else, uh, as you're joining us, thank you for being patient and supporting us on this uh, technically expressive journey that we're having right now. Um, yeah, we're looking for new ways of showcasing what we do and just... Yeah, that's that. Um, Lisa, so nice to see you. Yeah, you like like glitchy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. And thank you, Anthony Granny. Yes, Anthony Granny designs all of this stuff that you see here. I'm very lucky. I'm not... I am not technically savvy in the least. I try to be sometimes. I learn slowly but surely. But, you know, when you see the good stuff happening online, it's usually because of Anthony Granny. So huge thank you. Tiffany, hey, how are you? Good to see you back. Uh, welcome, welcome. How have you been doing? I know it's like a few folks out there. <laughs> Hello again, Hag <laughs> Savannah. A few folks out there have been commenting just about, um, like I noticed B saying, like, what a great description, difficult brain times. Um, for me, it's kind of glitchy. I think um, there's a feeling of I don't know, sometimes it feels heavy. Sometimes things feel a little heavy. And yeah, Shelly's saying you've been sick with, oh my goodness, please, please, please take care of yourself. And although I am not the boss of you, if anyone out there is feeling at all sick uh, in those kind of fluey ways, make sure to, you know, reach out, get some support, consider getting tested, just so, you know, you can have as much support in that, you know, taking care of yourself or being or have someone help take care of you as much support as you can with that because there's only one of each of us in the world and I don't like imagining a world without each of us in it I just don't like it that's it <laughs> and Tiffany how am I well okay a little bit glitchy as I was saying we've launched we have finally launched our community arts project, working with people living in priority neighborhoods in Oshawa. So if you haven't had a chance, this is a shameless plug, if you haven't had a chance to check out the video or the website page where we have links to the online audio survey, please, please do. Um, yeah, and if you live in a priority neighborhood, we need to, uh, we want to hear you. I think we need to hear from as many people living in those neighborhoods as possible. And Timothy, hey, how are you? Good to see you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, as I was talking, I was like sort of mentioned in a previous post on Facebook, I've been thinking a lot about storytelling. I've been thinking a lot about representation and authenticity in storytelling and how both how we find our authentic voice and the role each of us has to play in bringing that voice, that creative voice into the public. Uh, I think there's a, there's also something there about belonging and what happens when we, there was a fabulous quote by Maya Angelou that I, I don't know off by heart, but someone out there does uh, about there being no greater agony than uh, an untold story inside of you. Perhaps someone can look that up for me, but that sense of um, each of one of us has stories to tell whether or not we want to share them or are ready to share them that's a whole other story but just knowing that your stories have value 
is something that's really important. And I feel like through our stories, we find connection and we can even find belonging. So that's what I've been thinking about. And so I want to play with a bunch of different things today, but one of the things I want to come back to is cut out poetry, which is one way, uh, kind of a jump start to my writing process that I think everyone can use and appreciate. So you can watch me, ah, walk me through that. And yeah, there's just looking at the streams, there's so many reasons we might be feeling unwell. Um, understanding what that is happening with you, such an important thing. And if it ever gets, takes a turn for the worse, no matter what it is you might be dealing with, always know there are folks you can reach out to for support, okay? Now let's try this funky system again, because I wanna start making stuff. All right. So because of that glitchy feeling I've been having, Ah, Anthony, Granny, coming with the, coming with the, uh, the quote. Thank you so much. There is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. <sighs> yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. What do you guys think about that quote? Let's just put that out there and see. And Tim, once the living room opens, he'll clean up the living room as well for me. Wow, wow, have you, wow, really? Be careful what you put out there, Timothy. I might just, uh, I might just hold, <laughs> hold you to that. I will never say no to an offer to help me clean because uh, whether folks might know this or not, I am an exceptional messer. I am so good at messing stuff up. And if you've been to the living room, you know, you know that. Um, cleaning is, is, you know, it's a, I'm, I'm working on that. So thank you so much for that kind offer. That's, uh, that's really, really beautiful. I know a lot of messages have been coming through from folks who love the living room and appreciate the living room, the space of the living room. As much as we love this virtual space, I know that people are missing the actual space too. Oh, and hearing from Savannah. So honestly, oh, she's saying this year has been hard for me mentally and physically. However, I'm still trying to write stories and draw stuff I've been sitting on for a while. Yes, yes, please. Congratulations on that, Savannah, because that can be, well, it can be difficult. I think last week we were talking a little bit about the pressure to create and perform and the expectations we have on ourselves. And it's okay not to create, right? And sometimes we need that time, we need that space. Our brain needs time to absorb and process stuff. Um, but uh, coming back to that and like knowing that your stories have value and it makes me so happy to hear that you're getting back to writing and drawing and just telling those stories. If, you know, whenever you're ready, if you wanna share some of them here, please, please feel free. You're gonna find lots of folks who love them and lots of folks who appreciate your creative voice because you're the only one that, each one of our voices is completely unique. And Lisa Hart loves that quote. Really need to ponder on that. Yeah. There's a, I'm gonna, so what I'm doing right now, because if you have a feeling I'm going to be, with all my glitchiness, perhaps a little chatty today, a little tangenty, um, I wanna try and focus and ground myself. And one way I do that is through doing a non-dominant drawing. So some of you have seen me do this before. It's a great warm up for me. It just really centers me and distracts those parts of my brain that need to be distracted. So I'm normally right-handed, but for the warm up, I'm going to use my, my left hand just to draw and work on some whatever comes out. Just kind of an improvised doodle, I suppose. And so I'm gonna start and then I can chat with you. Let's see what I, what do I wanna draw? And Timothy, oh wow, can even get someone to do the windows and clean up, clean up the windows? That's lovely. I appreciate all of you so, so, so very much. Um, if anyone out there is like me, there's uh, a part of my anxiety can make it really easy to not disconnect entirely, but there's a comfort in there's a comfort in stepping away from things and I can get really, really comfortable with being on my own. 
and which was one of the reasons why the living room was so incredibly healthy for me because it provided this place where I could connect and create as well. So I think there's enormous value in coming together and doing those simple things, the creating, the having coffee, the cleaning the windows, uh, the sorting donations, untangling embroidery thread, whatever it might be, and all those little things that can happen in the actual studio space. Uh, whether or not we'll be able to do them in the same way that we have done them in the past, not quite sure. We're still figuring that out. But again, as I've mentioned before, living room is never going to go away. Never going to go away. But it might change. What it looks like might change. Hmm, interesting. And let's see. Yeah, Shelley acknowledging that create that part of uh, that creative wellness, the anchor that it gives us. If you weren't able to be creative, you wouldn't be able to survive this. Yeah. Um, hands up if you feel the same way. Um, I know we would survive it. We're capable of surviving so much, but I, I think there's more to life than just surviving. And I think what creativity, what this space, this you know shared creative space has done, what um, like all the activities, all the you know participation, whenever anyone sort of shares, whether it's on the, like this Facebook page or whether I see it through, you know, folks' Instagrams or other posts that happen online or I just hear random word of mouths when I, you know, you know stuff when I'm out at the grocery store. Um, knowing that people are still creating is, it brings me joy. And seeing and being inspired by what people are creating is fabulous. Like B, for example, has, am I allowed to say this? I don't know, maybe I'm not. Hey, Prin, nice to see you. Welcome back. Hope everything is okay there where you are. It's, uh, the world is still in an interesting and strange place, even though so, well, even though we're all being encouraged to kind of get back to some kind of normal. Normal seems to shift every single moment of the day. Um, well, you know what, I'll let B share about it when B's ready. I was just mentioning the creativity of community, you know, giving me a boost. And B's been collaborating on something with another amazing artist in the community that I think will be released soon. But I'll let B uh, tell the story about that if B wants to. Because I'm not sure if there's going to be a big fancy announcement or whatever. But what's interesting about that, everything online, the things that I love about it is um, with the online, work, the, like, uh, the online work we're doing, it can be shared beyond borders. I love the fact that we're connecting and collaborating and sharing things with people who you know, don't live in our city, who don't live in our region, who don't live in our province or country even. And you know what, Oshawa's got a lot of amazing stuff going on. So, hey, why not check it out? You don't have to live here to check out the online stuff. We've got some amazing art galleries. We've got an amazing cultural team through the city that are doing their very, 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 very best to find ways of keeping people connected and creative and keeping cultural things afloat and alive. So yeah, creativity helps me, reminds me that I'm doing more than just surviving. Because sometimes the only way I can see myself and know myself is through getting what's inside out. Right? Does that make sense to anyone? Oh, Aaron, interesting. So Timothy asking if you'd be able to join the video. Um, this video, no, we haven't figured out a way to do a Facebook live stream with more than one person yet. There will be opportunities. So uh, for those of you who don't know this, every Friday afternoon, or Friday not afternoon, every Friday morning, we've been having coffee chats with the community through a new thing that Facebook does called Messenger Rooms. And it's kind of like a, like a Zoom kind of experience. You become, for the living room anyways, you become a part of whatever group that we've created for that creative activity. And then we basically put up a little link in the group that you can click on. And when you click on it, you come into a virtual meeting space where we can see one another and talk to one another, hear one another and share what we're working on. So every Friday morning, we've been experimenting with that with a little informal ca coffee catch up. Um, but just do know that you're, people see you because we've become so accustomed to 
not seeing one another and things like this that if you click on the link and you don't know, well, that can be, it could, there can be, it could, let's just say one of our wonderful community members didn't know that they were going to be on camera and was actually in bed with their blankets pulled up to their chin. Um, and we had to check in to see what was going on because they didn't want to let us know that they actually, you, well, you, you're getting the idea, right? But um, yeah, you will be on camera. So just know that. But yes, on those things, Tim, you can join. And we hope to be doing more workshops like that where we can come together and create and chat just like we would if we were in the studio, but from wherever we are right now. And uh, yeah, the artwork keeps me level. Yeah, level is a, is a good way of saying it, Prin. Mm. Sometimes grounding, sometimes, but level. Yeah, not always feeling balanced, but uh, I think just knowing that that's out there and I can seek it still is important for me. Oh yeah, and Shelly, thank you for doing the listening to our neighbors survey. If you live in a priority neighborhood in Oshawa, please uh, check out the link. We have it pinned to the top of our Facebook page. If you don't live in a priority neighborhood in Oshawa, check out the link and see what you think. Um, maybe you've spent a long time living in one of the priority neighborhoods, in which case you have stories to tell as well. If folks are interested in me, talk, interested in me talking about that project here, I can do so. Um, but it's definitely one thing that's got me it's definitely sparked my own conversations internally about storytelling and belonging. Um, there was a... <laughs> so the coffee chat I'm seeing too in the comments that, uh, yeah, if you're an opposite of a morning person like B is, <laughs> don't worry, we, we hope to be creating groups that don't just happen at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. because there are Friday mornings when I wake up where I show up in that group and it is it is hard it's it's a different version of Mary it's yeah luckily my students that I have the wonderful students that we have with us on placement right now uh, they come all like even though they're exhausted as well they're there they're prepared they're pleasant and uh, bright-eyed so I can let that other part of myself show the part of me that's like uh, 9 a.m. What? Uh, yeah, but there will be groups at other times as well and workshops. We're going to get it back into the workshop mode. So hopefully that means community members uh, sharing your ideas about one, what kind of workshops you'd like to see. And also if you're a community member who would like to lead a workshop to share something that you do that you love that brings joy or something good to your life. If you have something that you'd like to share with other community members, um, yeah, please let us know. And yes, do a room art hive. Yes, 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 Peter, that's it. Yes, where people can join in or simply do it. Yes, the room art hive is, you know, where work, that's what we're working towards. Um, and checking up on all these things. Wow, you guys are awesome. I have a slightly bigger delay on the chat than I think you do. So forgive me if I'm catching up on things way past the time where you've posted. Uh, but all these ideas are lovely. And, uh, and okay, the question is out there. Prin was asking about priority neighborhoods. So I will, uh, if that's okay, chat about that. And Danny, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the pop-up art hive. And if it's the Danny I'm thinking of, um, Danny is a huge part of the Listening to Our Neighbors project. So if you're not familiar with Durham Region, or maybe if you are familiar with Durham Region, if you live here, a few years ago, so non-dominant drawing, hand drawing there. Let's see if I can add a little bit of color to it. Again, with my, my left hand instead of my right, really does interesting things to my brain whenever I do this. Um, in 2015, our region's health, so Durham Region Health, did a big survey and data collection kind of thing. Uh, basically where they, the focus was to evaluate the health of all the neighborhoods. Danny Crosby, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, evaluating the health of all of our neighborhoods in Durham Region. So Durham Region is made up of what? A bunch of cities. Uh, I can't remember how many now, but um, 
so there'd be Pickering, Ajax, Whitby, Oshawa, I think Bowmanville, perhaps, uh, Clarington, Bowmanville, Clarington. Uh, I think there were some others, but really the information that, and I see you, Peter, I will get in touch with you about this. We'll figure it out. Um, the information that they gathered basically revealed that some neighborhoods in Durham region were not healthy. So what that means is, uh, you know, you can have things in neighborhoods that make things difficult, right? You can have things that people deal with that make life difficult. So that could be health, wellness, access to resources, uh, education, access to education, um, you know, the ability to complete education, to, you know, go to school, to graduate high school, food security, housing security, uh, mental health wellness, physical health wellness, uh, and again, all the resources that can help improve those things for someone if you do have concerns or issues with them. Um, all the things, everything, there's so many different things. Um, everything from like, like number of doctor's visits or hospital visits, they had all this data. And, and you know, that's life. During life, each one of us will go through very difficult things from time to time. What they noticed though is that in some neighborhoods there was, well, speaking of balance, things were out of balance and there were more of those things present. So it wasn't just one issue in a neighborhood, it was potentially all of those issues in one neighborhood. And that for them was a sign of something needing to be done to provide support, to address these issues in an urgent way. Um, and that was in 2015. So there were seven neighborhoods that were identified in Durham region. Oh, I switched hands. See, oh, I want to go back to my right hand. Mm. They identified seven neighborhoods in Durham region that had an overwhelming amount of these issues. Five of them happened to be in Oshawa. So that is uh, the neighborhoods that they named were Lakeview, which is essentially South Oshawa. Gibbs Street West, Downtown Oshawa, where I live, Central Park neighborhood, and Beatrice North neighborhood. Uh, so I think Beatrice North is, people also refer to that neighborhood as Nonquan. Like each one of us might have different names for those neighborhoods. Oh, hello, Shakies. Hello, Tremors. Look at that. Tremors visiting today. So these neighborhoods were overwhelmed with these things. Now, it doesn't mean that, you know, I step outside and, you know, houses are on fire and cars are crashing and, you know, it's, it's not, they don't always reveal them. These issues don't always reveal themselves in those ways. Guys, I'm going to switch to my other hand. Is that okay? I'm cheating a little bit. Um, my brain is taxed. It's, that's what it's showing me with the tremors. My brain is taxed. Um, glitchy. So there are all these things in all these neighborhoods. You don't necessarily see them, but they do sort of show themselves in small ways. Um, and sometimes in big ways. And for a long time, especially around that time, it was, this report became, well, it got a lot of publicity, which is not a bad thing. We need to address these issues and we need the publicity, but something that had already been happening in these neighborhoods, uh, because the living room actually sits in downtown Oshawa as well, so it sits in one of these priority neighborhoods, is that these neighborhoods had already been experiencing a lot of stigma. And when I say the neighborhoods, what I'm really talking about is the people, the people living in these neighborhoods. Yeah, so another name for them would be deprived areas or perhaps at-risk at areas. Um, and you know what? Yes, you lived in Beatrice North and, and downtown Oshawa, so you know the, the things that we all dealt with, right? Um, yeah, where people aren't supported, where people are marginalized, prin, yeah. And there's that sense of the neighborhoods became so much associated and have become so much associated with the struggles that people, when areas, when all you hear or see is negative things about the place where you live, about the people that you know, about the person you are, like how can you not begin to identify with that sense of being a problem when all you hear 
when all you see is the problem, it's impossible, like, it becomes so tricky to separate yourself from that. We all know that we're not problems. The problems are the problems. But disentangling that, being able to, to step outside that for a moment, not to pretend that the issues aren't real, but to remember that in spite of the issues, there is still joy, there's still resiliency, there's still strength, there are still moments of humor and love and compassion and pleasure. Um, yeah, Pierre, Peter, I think that's true. Each region has its own issues and things that they need to deal with. And Pran, you're absolutely right. These things tie into systemic oppression and policies that are not, um, that are not working, or perhaps policies that are serving people in power and not people, not the average person. Um, yeah, oh, hello, Carlos, welcome. Yeah, very cool that things are being looked into in these areas, says Carlos. It's cool that uh, things are being looked into, uh, and I'm glad that the issues being explored are being done in a wider lens, if that makes sense. Yeah, for me, it was like, the reason we started the Listening to Our Neighbors project is because we would be talking with one another at the studio and we all you know and this like we're lucky at the studio there's a really broad spectrum of people who who come there so we were able to informally chat about what it's like to live in these neighborhoods what it's like to see people or to see ourselves represented in negative ways pretty much always to people ass to assume that um, yeah, to assume the worst. Yes, see, exactly, Prin. So Prin is saying the issues are from government oppression, but such rich communities. And that is what we were going for. And this is the thing I find interesting because uh, when we sent out all the information about the project today, one of the responses I got back from uh, was from an, an agency who does work with folks in the community who are insecurely housed who encounter a lot of struggles with regards to um, issues regarding homelessness and all the things that might come along with that and this was before all the lovely packages had been launched there have been people we were like we were talking about because we wanted to connect with them and we wanted to be able to use almost like be able to drop in to do a, a social distanced uh, survey station with them and one of the individuals there sent me back uh, a lovely email, but with the uh, commenting basically about how they didn't know why I was inviting them to be a part of the project and assuming that this project wasn't meant for the people they worked with. And I think that was really, really interesting as well. And. So I sent back, you know, she was checking in, which was great. So I sent back a clarifying email just to say, no, absolutely. We need all voices represented. This is absolutely for people from all walks of life, every community, but specifically, I would say, even communities of those folks who, you know, are most marginalized, who have the least privilege in our community, because those voices are the ones that are most often excluded uh, when it comes to things like, you know, seeking their advice or learning, like drawing, um, like basing projects or policies on their lived experience. You know, there's, it comes usually from the top down. It doesn't come from the grassroots up, um, but also in the, within the arts, to be quite, you know, to be honest. We don't see people's stories represented. Now, Danny Crosby, who is the artist who will be helping us on this project, who's a large part of this project, who also has this fabulous uh, stranger listening project, which I'm so looking forward to learning more about. Um, oh, interesting, Savannah. I'm going to come back to that comment. Yes. Um, this sense of, uh, like in the fine art, arts world, you rarely see these, you know, the people who are most marginalized, their voices are not represented, not represented at all. Their artwork is not represented at all. It's almost like this assumption of, what do they have to say that would be of value to the community at large? Um, I find that horrifying on many levels. And I've also witnessed 
the opposite of that. I've witnessed the richness, the, you know, the wealth of creative expression. And the fact that, I mean, at least speaking for myself, opinions are my own, you know, this, the fact that whenever we see community members, if, like in these neighborhoods represented, they tend to be represented as victims or victimizers, people who are problematic, and that is not right. So for me, it's important that we create as many opportunities for these voices to be included, not just exclusively, but represented as a part of the community, woven into the, the fabric of this community. And it takes me back to, so the comment that Savannah was mentioning, where was it? It was such a great comment. So, so Savannah, I know my dad would always say, I couldn't visit the living room because of the neighborhood before the whole lockdown. Yeah, Savannah, you're not alone. A lot of folks in the community, a lot of parents, um, a lot of people were afraid to come into the neighborhood. It's kind of like a John Hughes movie from the 80s where it's like, don't cross to the other side of the tracks. It's literally like that, like don't go to the other side of Memorial Park. Um, and I know in other priority neighborhoods, they might experience the same thing, like don't go south of Bloor Street or whatever it might be. And if you're not from Oshawa, you can probably, I mean, this is something that happens everywhere. So you can probably still link it the things that are occurring in your neighborhoods, in your communities, the sense of othering that happens because we are afraid, right? Um, yeah, and we, we, when we're only focusing on the problems, we miss out on all the wonderful stuff. We miss out on the possibility, the potential, the resources that are within those communities. And it remind, and so it's a real educational process, helping people understand that you don't have to be afraid. Um, and sometimes, yeah, Prin, I agree, demonized. I think it's so easy. A lot of people in our community, a lot of beautiful humans and beautiful artists, complicated people, people with lots of, you know, dancing with lots of different things, like so many of us do, but perhaps without the resources or, you know, or, who cares, right? The fact that, you know, they are still like, they may, you know, make some choices that are difficult for us to comprehend. They may do things or have things in their lives that are difficult for us to imagine within our own, but it doesn't make them any less human. And I think in fact, for me, like understanding where those things come from, that's what helps make us less afraid. Understanding more about what that's like and you know, Prin, you're right, they should not be demonized. And I think each one of us can play a part in challenging that, that view. When we start with ourselves, right? That's the only place I can start, right? Yeah, Carlos, I'm hoping that this won't be a tokenistic work either. And it'll be something that will help positively promote social capital joint community. What's he saying? I've said this since moving to Canada. Oshawa has a really beautiful community connection. The events that encourage shared narratives of marginalized communities are awesome too. These may scare some folks and spark oppressive attitudes as a result. However, I hope that projects like this can help shape that community diversity and celebration even more whilst challenging oppressions of these marginalized groups. I hope so too. And we're going to do our best to make sure that as many people who can, as many people who want to, will participate in this project. And from what we've been seeing, even through the responses we've had so far, we're receiving beautiful, honest, raw, um, there's a lot of beautiful things coming in. And this has only been the first morning. And Shelly, yeah, all the, like what you're experiencing up in uh, Nanquan, you know, I think you mentioned before that, you know, you have a beautiful school, but no doctor's offices around you. Um, and you're, you're seeing police or ambulances almost once or twice a week. I think that's not uncommon for priority neighborhoods. And I think it's really difficult because we don't always know why those ambulances or police are coming into the neighborhood. Um, but we've begun to associate that with, again, with that narrative of badness, that something bad is happening. Um, and again, there's lots of conversations to be had around that when perhaps the badness is how it's how whatever the original initial concern is is being responded to um that's 
that's a really important conversation to be had as well at the living room you know again it was savannah your you know your father you know had a point in some cases i think it's really scary to let someone you love walk into a neighborhood that you associate with negative things especially a child of course right um no one no one would want to put anyone they loved at risk i get that but again that when we, all we see and all we know is a narrative of badness it becomes really difficult it, it becomes all you see and we start making assumptions about everyone around us without any real information to back it up um, and and even if there was badness because i think that's an important thing to remember too at the studio things weren't always rainbows and puppy dogs. I say that it kind of, you know, that's my way of addressing the big things. But if you've, you know, if you've ever been in the living room, you've seen, you know, you've seen someone have an extraordinarily rough day. You've seen someone who, you know, was so tired that while they were making art, they maybe fell asleep on their t on the table and if it was quiet enough in the studio and we had enough of a relationship with them to know that they were okay that was okay um you've seen people yell at me and um sometimes for really good reason um <laughs> but you've seen people just not knowing where to put their pain and i like to think that when we co-create spaces like this together what it allows people to do who have nowhere else to put their pain is that they feel safe enough to say, I'm in pain and I don't know what to do. And sometimes that comes out like, I hate you, Mary. You said this was a safe space. Uh, expletive, 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 you know, whatever that might be. And in those situations, even though my adrenaline might be pumping and what I need to remember is that the person who is most vulnerable in that moment is often the person who is making the most noise, whose cry is the loudest. Um, I'm perfectly safe. I'm perfectly okay. And witnessing this, you know, moment, knowing that they feel comfortable enough to share that with me, I, is a privilege. Does that make sense? Yeah? That's part of their... <sighs> the fabric of their life, the fabric of their story. Um, we can't ignore those things. So those things might emerge during this project. What I'm hoping will also emerge once we that is given voice to is also the other things I see at the studio, which are moments of delight and love and support and, you know, there's there's lots of that out there too. That's the kind of stuff I'm hoping to also see revealed, right? So that we can recognize things as resources. We can recognize the things in community that can be really supported. Um, if there's people or like pockets within these communities that bring people joy, that bring people relief, that are there in ways that we don't know about, that it's impossible for me to know about because I don't live in that neighborhood, I want to know about them. I want to know how you see your neighborhood, the symbol you'd give it, the person who makes your day brighter, the experience, the event, you know, whatever it might be. It doesn't have to be a big thing. The details. I think joy sometimes is really in the details. Um, and so, Peter, I'm catching up on the comments again. I'm in a real tangenty kind of mood today, folks. Well, thank you, Peter. That's the, thank you. Practicing saying thank you again for, you know, thanks for, well, you know, the work that we're doing, everyone's doing. The Art Hive movement and over, overall is doing is super important. And Shelley, yeah, you know, getting to back to the things that we aren't so uncomfortable with in our neighborhoods. Yeah, things like not, you know, being afraid to go out after dark. I can understand that. Like each one of us, that's another thing that happens when you know your neighborhood. You know the, you know, you know the real the real and not just imagined or not just projected dark stuff. So you make those decisions to take care of yourself. You say, I'm not going to walk through the park at midnight. I'm going to 
take this well-lit street, if you're lucky enough to have a well-lit street in your neighborhood, um, or I'm not going to go outside. Those are decisions I wish we didn't have to make, but they're things that we, the decisions we can make to help take care of ourselves, you know, on the path to change being created. Um, but that's another great thing as well. So are there not that that's a great thing that being afraid to go out, but are there solutions? Are there things that you've seen in your neighborhood that have worked? What's working? What helps make all those struggles easier? Is it the friend? Is it the person who says, I'll walk with you? Is it the, the grandmother who takes care of the kids? Um, or the grandmothers who take care of the kids? You know, how many secret resources, how many secret superhumans do we have out there that we could provide support for? And instead of, again, imagining ways of, you know, having people imagine ways of solving problems, you know, why not see what solutions are already working and strengthen them? Hmm. Yeah, so Shelley, yeah, we have a good park and community that has been othered and being judged harshly because of it. Yeah. Uh, that's B, sorry, that's B. I believe that too. And, oh, Prin, I'm glad you love this group. It's so good to see you back. It's awesome. And, yeah, and Savannah. Oh, B, reaching out to Savannah. If you're interested, you might consider inviting your father to come with you to see for himself how the community works. And you know, right? He has. That's the interesting thing. Um, and it's really, it's, again, that interesting thing that, it's different to drop by, it's different to drive by. There's something about spending time with the community, being with one another, that is so important. It's so important. The more we learn, the more we know. Information is power. You've heard all of that before, but information also, it shines light. Information is light in so many ways. So. When he came by, it was such a beautiful thing to see him there. And I wish he'd been able to spend time there and make art with people or create with people rather than just, just standing in the space and talking to me. That's one of the reasons why, if you've come to the living room, uh, I'm always, I'm like, one of the things we do is encourage people to make art. It's not just a coffee shop. We want you to create, sit down at a table and spend time with yourself, with other people to learn about who you are and how you are with other people. It's such an important thing. I'm gonna have some tea. And yeah, B, I like, yeah, accountable space. And that's what we really mean by safety, accountability. Mmm, and Prince art. Art is where that goes in all those darker moments. So not knowing where to put your pain. Art is a fantastic, fantastic, uh, yeah, it's, what did one of my students teach me? Letting the art hold the hard stuff. I love that. I love that very much because it does. Um, and it is empowering. And Danny, oh, wow. Thank you for including me in this. It means a lot. Because Danny lives in a priority neighborhood too. I hope this is a great beginning and we can move from listening, illustrating, representing to maybe one day leading workshops with our neighborhoods where we teach others how to visually represent their own stories. Ooh, I'd be excited to do that with uh, the living room distanced or otherwise. Danny, you know I'm down with that. You know I'm down with that. You know what I've also wanted to do? Totally off topic, but not really. I'd like to, uh, this is something that comes from being a child of the 70s and 80s, I think. Um, I, want, I want to like sister or twin the Oshawa city with another city out there in the world. Um, I'd love to do that. Like I'd love to actually expand the nature of community and connect people with others that are outside of their community, but like maybe way outside of their community. Um, maybe that's a whole entirely different project from that one. But I do really, I think there are so many things we can do here. That's why, and the arts, whatever kind of like modality you choose to use, uh, there's just a, a wealth of possibility and potential. And sorry, needed some tea. Um, I think art is such a great entry point for these kind of conversations. Or just the idea of creative dialogue, being able to riff, being able to hold space with one another. And hold on. 
um, know that stuff is okay, right? We're gonna make mistakes and we're gonna see our edges and experience our edges and that's okay. We can move through that, we can recover. We can become stronger and more human. Yeah, they are, Oh, thanks Prin. Our art is so empowering. Keep doing what you're doing, everyone. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Prin. Thank you for that encouragement. It's lovely. And Savannah back at Doubt Hill. Let's see. Your father's pretty stubborn. Yeah, I can see that. Once his mind is made up, he's also... <gasps> he doesn't like me. Oh my goodness. Well, we're pulling the weeds here, aren't we, Savannah? It's okay. A lot of people don't like me. Or sometimes they like me, but then the next day they don't like me. That's okay. Does that make sense? Yeah? It happens. I'm okay with that. I can take that. I wasn't always able to take it. Me and approval, we have a long time inner critic relationship. But yeah, and that stubborn thing, sometimes that happens. It happens with, for so many different reasons. It happens with adults, it happens with parents, it happens with younger people, it happens when we're afraid, it happens when we're, when we just don't know better. Usually the stubbornness, I find, even though it takes a long time, sometimes that stubbornness is a, is a, is a sign though. It comes right before the change or the growth begins to happen. So it's not always a permanent thing. We change and we grow, just you know, like the art we do. We evolve, right? Oh, Shelly, a beautiful positive moment there seeing this. I have an older woman who has adopted me and is so special. See those stories. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, right? Like you say that, even the way you phrase that, I'm like, maybe there's a possible project in community or a program or something for people partnering one another with one another, right? Community connections in a way that's a little deeper than just the person you say hello to or wave to. Maybe there are, you know, those resources, that feeling of family when you don't have family, chosen family, the chosen family project. Dog owners, we do love chatting. Well, most of us. And Dan, oh, wow. Thank you for your leadership and inspiration. Well, I can't say. I, you know what, Dan? I, I will take a little bit of a thank you for that, but I'm going to shine that back at the community because the participation in these conversations, that's where this comes from. But I do have a story about fear and community that is one of the things that also sparked this project, if you're interested in seeing. Oh, thank you, Peter. It's okay you're not in the region of Ontario, Peter. We have folks here, I think, from the UK. There might be folks watching, I think, uh, from Nova Scotia as well in Newfoundland um, and just outside of Durham region generally. Because when people, uh, we've had community members who've had to move away. We've had community members that we've only met through being online, so it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And just be, uh, that's one of my favorite things about coming together and co-creating that space with one another is just learning how to be in the space. That's the art of humaning that we come back to as well, right? Yeah, and for some people, Shelley, like your church family, your families of faith, whatever that might look like to you, they, like for a lot of folks here, that faith, that connection through spirit is really important. Ah. And Savannah, again, the, the importance of family. Yeah, we're not always going to get along with everyone in our family and certainly not all the time. But knowing that, you know, you have someone that you can connect with, I'm so happy that you have that connection. And hey, black sheeps are, you know, nothing wrong with that. No, right? And connecting with folks in other provinces or even countries is amazing. I love B that we're able to do this online. Shelly, are you working with clay? Lovely, lovely. There's someone who connected with me about donating some clay to the space as well. So thank you for reminding me to get back with them. Uh, I don't, I'll have to find a way of maybe sharing that with the community, maybe, do, maybe doing a clay drop off day at the studio or a, a clay pickup day. Uh, I'll see if they still have it because we wouldn't want that to dry out. Um, let's see. And Peter, thank you because you're uh, in Montreal right now. So if folks would like to connect with Peter, Peter also let me know last week about this amazing virtual open mic art hive that happens every Tuesday night, I think. We posted it last, about it last Friday, I believe, but um, I'll check in with Peter again and we'll make sure we post folks to remind them. So if you want to participate in a virtual open mic, 
you can join uh, this amazing group. And thank you for Peter for uh, sharing that with me. And creative humaning. Hmm. So B, again, it's one of those things. I'm gonna spend some time reading this because I love this. Folks don't have to like me in order for me to keep doing my thing. In some cases, I, re I revel in folks' disapproval of me and my life. <laughs> yeah, I, again, joy can be found in unexpected places. <laughs> and Prin in the UK, yes, hello. And oh, Prin, black sheeps often have everyone's number. That's why they're often the one no one messes with. Yeah, there's something about that. When you're the outsider, it's not necessarily because of something you've done. It's a choice you might have made. It's a, a choice you might have to have made, but often it has to do with others and wanting or needing or just being different and knowing that it's more important to your wellness and your joy to be yourself as authentically as you want to be and can be than being what someone else wants you to be, fitting into what they want you to be. Um, it's difficult, right? It's not easy. But for all the black sheeps out there, and I'm one of those, and I think uh, it can be beautiful too. We have perspective when we're on the outside sometimes, perspective that we don't have when we're on the inside. But again, remembering that, you know, Taking care of yourself is also, you know, taking care of yourself too, knowing that you're safe. So knowing when, having that person you can reach out to and connect with is so important. Knowing what you need to do to take care of yourself, wherever you're at right now, you know, there'll be some choices that you can make now or that you can't make now that you might be able to make later. You know, just knowing where you're at on that journey and knowing that things change, relationships change, people can change, even people can change. Oh, yeah, families are complicated, Savannah. Yep, families are complicated. I think everyone raise a hand if you uh, have a complicated family. <laughs> but, you know, something to think of, complicated families. As far as storytelling goes, just looping it back to that. They're part of where our stories emerge from, right? And sometimes we only learn who we are through the contrast we recognize in others. So as much as, you know, my own story growing up, it was very complicated. Uh, the differences between myself and the folks who did their best to take care of me, and still do, bless them, because I love them very much. But it wasn't always a relationship of love for me. It was very difficult sometimes. We've come to a place now and it's an entirely different relationship. So there is hope out there, but they've they provided kind of the space for me to recognize who I was, even if they didn't intentionally do that. Part of that comes from recognizing who I wasn't, right? And Savannah, if you need, oh see, look at all the people raising their hand and frantically <laughs> waving it around. Savannah, you are not alone. That's what I'm seeing here. Be yourself, says B, and, uh, yeah, we're having a whole lot of, see, a whole lot of love. You are not alone, Savannah. You're not alone. And it doesn't help right now that a lot of us during pandemic and like quarantine times, we have no choice but to be with uh, complicated families. Just know that, you know, listen to yourself. Give yourself, you know, get, look at me being prescriptive. So, you know what I'll do? I'll throw it out there to everyone. Um, I don't know if you're asking for it, Savannah, but what we can do here is share ways that we have either survived complicated stories or been a part uh, in families or been a part of um, watching like how we've watched those complicated family stories evolve, um, things that we've done to help ourselves when things are tough, right? When the resources and things we want, we can't always get to, what do you reach for? What helps? What helps and keeps you safe? What keeps you healthy? What keeps you happy? Because, yeah, like the same support, Savannah, I see you saying, you know, you try and give her as much support as you can when everyone else throws shade at her. Um, 
that support that you give her, and I'm sure she gives you back. I'm opening the floor to discussions about how we can provide that support for ourselves when we need it most. How about that? Yeah? And Peter, you're right, one day at a time. One moment at a time. Um, one moment at a time. I've, you know, you f we find solace and growth in the strangest of places sometimes. When we're lucky, we find other humans out there who provide that space and that love and that support. Yeah, I agree with Prin. The fact that you have her, it's absolutely lovely. You have each other, right? And I think I need to remind myself every moment of the day that just because things are like this right now doesn't mean they'll always be like that. It doesn't mean they'll always be like that. Knowing who you are and making space in your life to continue getting to know who you are, like that's a journey. I'm still learning about who I am. I don't, I don't know about anyone else out there, but every day, every day, Ah, and Wendy, forgive yourself. That's a beautiful forgive ourselves. Yeah, making that, that space, that compassion, finding that compassion within ourselves. When we have those difficult moments or when we do difficult things ourselves, forgiving ourselves. Showing the same support, demonstrating the same support that we often do for others for ourselves as well. Yeah. Yeah, and survival is an interesting thing, Savannah. The only thing keeping you going is a bond you have with your fans and siblings and friends. That's a huge thing. That's a really important thing. Yeah. And B says, I had to build my own family by choosing the people who you can love and respect. B, love and respect B for who B is. Yeah. And Prin says, make sure you have time for yourself to recharge. Absolutely. You don't have to stay in the drama all the time. Um, that was something that took me a very long time to learn that I don't have to engage with the drama, right? The all that, oh gosh, it can be so exhausting, but uh, you don't have to share your, your heart. You don't have to open your heart and take that in. You can step away, step away. If you have a place or a space or, you know, put the headphones in, listen to that music, get your sketchbook out, do some sketches, get the knitting needles out if you knit, get the, I don't know, whatever it might be, get the thing, call that thing to you that helps you reclaim the space for yourself so you feel safe, you feel secure, you can have your time, making that time so you can recharge yourself. You don't have to engage in the drama. Mm. And so B's chosen family, so this is a really good point too, most of those chosen family are not blood or marriage related to you. So we find that community, that really truly beautiful, meaningful community in so many places. Yeah. And do what makes you feel right. Do what makes you feel right, yeah. No more drama, Prin, yeah. There's a lot of drama out there. So much drama. We don't have to let it in. We don't have to engage if we don't have the strength, if we're not feeling up to it. Knowing that there's love out there, right? Like, the fact, for example, that everyone is here right now, that we're having this conversation while I completely forget about the other thing I wanted to do today, which is cut out poetry next week. Um, the fact that I can sit here and paint my heart, my left-handed heart with you folks brings me enormous lovely sense of community and connection and family. And Peter, going to leave here for now, so I need to do something else. But Mary, yes, I do look forward to hearing back from you. Will do. Uh, consent to harass. And yeah, we'll be in touch. I'm liking this Montreal-Oshawa connection. This is cool. And Carlos, someone once said to me, just because we're invited to attend the drama doesn't mean we have to pull up a seat and attend it. I'm just going to have a moment to look at that one. Well said, Carlos. Yeah, and sometimes, yes, easier said than done. But it's, yeah, I can see why it stayed with you. I think that's going to stay with me too. Yeah. The actor in me really loves that as well. 
And B, yeah, thanks for the shout out. Shout out to Peter. Oh, what, what, where does that be? Where does the Mary J. Bond, where does that come from? I missed something in the stream of conversation. We're getting into music? Okay. And Peter's saying, I will be around if anyone wants to talk to me. You can just message me on Facebook. Much easier for me. Oh, that's really, that's a really kind offer, Peter. Thank you for that. That is lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, yeah, making connections during this time. Again, what a beautiful thing that we can with people who aren't necessarily physically uh, in our, like sharing the same community as our own. You never know where the resources are going to be. Just, you know, encourage everyone to take care of yourself. Don't feel like you need to take on or you should take on more than you need or want to. Self-care first. Self-care. Radical self-care, I would say, in these times. In these times when folks, well when we've been called to action in so many different ways, when we feel called to move in so many different ways. That radical self-care is super important. And even Savannah, you know what I might do? I might check in with you a little bit after this live stream if you're up to it, just to see how you're doing. Oh, there we go, no more drama. Yes, okay, the song bite, yeah, I get it. So, okay, can someone post that in the chat? Can we call up uh, that uh, video? and share it with folks. I think it's a good thing. That's a good, uh, maybe that's the song of the day. Maybe that's the song of the day. Carlos says, saying those are warming colors in your heart art there, Mary. It's wonderful. <sighs> Many layers. It, the, the, my heart art today is reminding me a bit of an onion, you know, when you slice open an onion. Let's see if I can do, I'm gonna try something else, folks. Let's see if I can do a show, do a close-up of my art. We're going to try it right now. How about that? Is that a thing that just happened? There's a delay there, so I can't really see if it moved. But hopefully what's just happened is a close-up on my little, little bitty heart here. <laughs> I'm an onion, Carlos says. Wonderful layers. Oh, wow. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. <laughs> All right, so I'll switch back. Let's see if I can do this. And thanks again to our wonderful tech, tech team of one, Anthony Granny, for making this happen. Oh, fantastic, Prin. Thanks for conjuring the song for us. That's brilliant. So again, finding, we've got, we have community all around us, but we don't always, <laughs> we don't always take the time to get to know one another. And Shelly's saying, I choose family unless it might cause judgment. Interesting, interesting, interesting. That's an interesting thought. The fear of judgment or the fear of making someone else feel judged, sometimes that prevents us from getting down to things, but it's a call, you know, that each one of us has to make, right? Oh, thank you, Prin. Woohoo! Oh, lovely. So thanks, Savannah. Yeah, I'll connect. We'll connect. And if anyone else, you know, we'll just, we'll keep connecting with one another. That's what we'll do. Let's see. Should I tell the story? I know we're wrapping up, it's like almost, it's a quarter after three, but should I tell the other story? Just when it comes to, to judgment, themes of judgment and the listening to our neighbors project and another reason why I started it. Shall I share that story with folks? One of the things that I experienced, some of you have heard this before, so you can, you know, yeah, it's a good song. Um, if you've heard this story before, you do not have to listen. But again, it taught me a whole lot about the state of things in our community. So in Oshawa, uh, the Oshawa had this big relationship with cars and the auto industry for a long time. And there are a lot of people here who love their cars. Um, not a bad thing, sorry. That's perfectly fine. That's what you're into, that's fantastic. 
Um, but because we've been playing the living room, we've been playing with this idea of creating a mobile art studio. Uh, I actually, for the first time in my life, had a reason to connect with people that knew about cars and, you know, transforming cars and all the things that those, you know, like those people, look at me othering, that car people do. So there's an event that usually happens in the summer called Show and Shine. And one day after closing up the studio, I was walking home. It was beautiful. It was beautiful outside. It was nice, like early summer kind of day, late, late afternoon. And I saw that Show and Shine was on and I thought, you know what, why don't I just go and I'll chat and I'll check in with people, introduce myself and just see who I can connect with. And uh, you know, you never know, there might be someone there who loves the idea of being part of a mobile art studio project. Uh, like imagine kind of a wacky food truck that delivered art supplies and art experiences instead of food. Oh, maybe food. That could be a fundraiser aspect to it. Anyways, no, too much. Back to the story, Mary. So I entered Show and Shine, which is outside. So you just kind of cross over a curb. And I just started saying hi to people. And, you know, as you do. And I noticed that people were being a little, well, they were just quiet, but that's okay. They're doing their show. They're sitting beside their car. Maybe this is a very uh, sacred experience for them. Um, but I really did want to learn about what was going on. So I, I saw someone sitting beside a vehicle that seemed to have some work done on it, uh, an older gentleman. And I just, you know, this time I said, which I sometimes do, I'm just going to, I'm just going to talk until someone talks with me. And I did. And at first there was reticence. And then eventually we warmed up to one another and I learned about him and he learned about me and we could talk about this project. And I learned a little bit about his cars and what he loved about his cars and he actually he uh, you know there's lots of amazing things that he did he was a writer he wrote for a magazine about cars like a sort of informal um, like kind of a just people who are passionate about those things that like a passion project um, not for any specific company uh, and it was just great and you know I must have spent about 45 minutes maybe an hour talking to him which if you know me at the studio it's not uncommon for me to do Oh, bye, Shelly. Please take care. Take care of yourself, okay? And hopefully, yes, hopefully we will see you Friday. We'll see you soon, okay? Um, feel better, Shelly. And uh, so we have this conversation, and it's lovely. And we're wrapping up. I'm about to say goodbye. And he says, I wasn't going to talk with you at first when you first approached me. And I said, why? And I'll never forget this. He said, because I thought you were homeless. Now that's interesting, right? Now, there's lots of stuff going on there. So much stuff. Because, well, so what? If, if I am homeless, does that not mean that I'm worth talking to? Um, how do you know when someone is homeless? Um, what did it, what is it about me that you're judging in that moment that makes you instantly afraid of me, of who I am and perhaps what I want from you? So all these things are running through my head and we chatted a little bit more and I was like, okay, well, I did, I, I don't, I can't even remember how I responded to that. Uh, in that moment. I know that I like I took it a little further and we exchanged information and then I was like, okay, well, you know, this is this is a moment of growth for him, obviously. He stepped out of his comfort zone. So I will, you know, continue doing this. And he was a lovely person. Just, you know, very much afraid. Yeah. But in that moment I also learned that that's something that's going on in our community, in our priority neighborhood, which is probably going on in so many neighborhoods around the world, because this wasn't a person who lived in our neighborhood. This was someone who came in for this event, who lived in Oshawa, but would sort of drop in every Wednesday or whatever for this event. And I realized that that fear was preventing him from so many things in life. And it made me want to, one, learn about where that fear comes from. There's lots of things there. There's privilege, there's uh, ignorance, there's prejudice, there's 
fear. A lot of it to me comes back down to fear, right? Um, and I realized that there's also, you know, the reason that he might be afraid is simply because all he knows is what he sees, what he sees, you know, what is shown to him about our community and the people who live there. He's, he doesn't have, ever have a chance to move beyond that. And he's not letting himself move beyond that because he's trying to protect himself from something. So part of this project is also breaking through that a little bit, softening people's hearts, um, just reminding people that we're all, you know, we're all in this community together. We're all in this city together. I want, I mean, this is a, you know, this is something that I want, so really who cares? Um, but if people, I do believe that if people learned more about what it was like to be someone else, someone else that maybe they haven't ever had the chance to get to know before, never had an experience to share space with or listen to, I really do believe that when we give ourselves those opportunities and we learn, we come to a place in our lives where we, we can understand more and judge less. And we're more willing to step out of that comfort zone the next time. We're more willing to sit, to come to the living room art studio and sit at a table with people. We're willing to, you know, say hello back to someone who says hi to us, to have that conversation and not be afraid of, to not be afraid of one another. That's that. Hmm. So Shelly, this is an interesting thing. Yeah, Carlos, so Carlos saying so much to unpack, but that was also really cool that he felt okay to share that with you. Yeah, and I have to recognize that too. Like that vulnerability to say that was huge. And that's why I don't think he's a horrible person. There's not that. There's just a lot of stuff there. And if I played a small part in shaking some of that stuff up, uh, I guess, yeah, I'm happy, right? And then Shelly's saying, let's see. So Shelly's saying, why then do I feel isolated? That's an interesting question. Now I'm just seeing it pop up now, so I think it might be out of context. Um, if you can provide a little more stuff around that as I paint my heart, if I get back to my heart, that would be, that would be helpful. And B saying, heck, nobody gets out of life alive. Being afraid before learning about a situation or a space or a person just doesn't cut it for you anymore. Yeah. And Prin, yeah, the fear, and it's a defense mechanism and not knowing the actual problems in society that have led to the homeless person to be in that situation, right? And there's so much there. And the fact that he sees one person, even the, even the thing of just seeing someone who's dressed differently, because... <laughs> like they, those snap judgments are being made in those moments, right? That just on, based on what is being seen and nothing else. And it is sad. It's super sad. But yes, Prin, we can all, we all can be agents of change. And that I think is the power of being an artist. When we own our artist natures, we see that every day when we create, we're creating, we're making change. We're taking ideas and turning them into things or projects or whatever it might be. We are already aware of our own ability to make change. So that can be expanded, right? We can stretch that out and shine a light and engage in new and interesting ways. Lean into the awkward conversations if need be, as long as we feel safe to do so. We can be there for one another to support one another during those awkward conversations. And we're all in this community. So all voices, all people, all artists are needed to make that change, right? Oh, folks, it's 325. I could continue this conversation forever and ever and ever. And you know what? Maybe that's what we do. We just pick up where we left off and we continue the conversation. And that's okay. I'm really thankful that everyone, to everyone who joined me this week. Um, to those of you who are watching or listening and not in the chat, you are welcome as well. I thank you and honor you for being a part of this creative energy and the, the creation of this virtual hive. Um, for those of you who watch the live stream afterwards, when it's all locked up, 
I appreciate you as well. Thank you for taking the time. Even if it's just a few minutes here or there, even if you weren't able to stay or watch the whole thing, thank you for being a part of this. And through being a part of it, you're, help, you're, you're, you're a part of placemaking, folks. <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Savannah, let's see, lived with fear uh, and anger for most of your life. And it's hard to open up sometimes and even trust people when you couldn't even trust your parents. Hmm. That is hard. But it looks like you're finding people, you're finding your community, your chosen family, your friends. And I think all of us can relate to this. And some of us are on this journey. We've always been on this journey. And it's okay. And remember, things change, right? We're changing. We can make sure we can do our best to change in the ways we want to change or to own who we are so that we don't have to change for somebody else. And Carlos, not to detract from this and hopefully to add to it, I was in Toronto some time last year and no one batted an eye, an eyelid when I was walking through the city. A homeless guy outside the station looked parched. So I got a coffee for us both and sat with him. We chatted, but I noticed that at the moment I sat with him, folks around us looked at me very differently and I even had someone drop some change at the side of your backpack on the floor. Some ignored us, and it opened up my eyes about what he deals with every day. He was a lovely person, and it sucked that folks responded that way. Later, I left him some food and change and carried on with my day, but people went back to treating me, Carlos, like one of them. It was such a quick shift and lens around me just made me even more aware of how quickly the fear or misunderstanding can lead us to block people out, to keep our narrative as our own. Not great, but hopefully conversations like the one uh, you had with the person will help change that perspective. Yeah, we need to listen, open dialogue and make that change. And through opening that dialogue, we are making the change. And Prin saying we are, and that goodness goes into the universe and gets redistributed to us and everyone. I agree. And B, reaching out to Savannah. I've been where you are, pal. Yep. There are people who know what it's like, people who can relate. You're not alone. To anyone out there who might be watching and feeling the things that we've been chatting about today, all the things, any of the things, may I take a moment to remind you that you are not alone, even if in this moment it feels like it. Expand those spidey senses. And just know that you are not alone and that there are people when you need it you can reach out to for support please don't hesitate to reach out and if you need any help in identifying what some of those supports might look like for you again there are people a part of this chat from all over the place um, but if you'd like to reach out we can try and find some of those supports for you whether you want kind of official supports uh, like people to go to to talk to to help access the things you need to live a better life to live your best life, to just help you feel safe and secure, or if it's just someone to talk to, um, reach out, let us know, okay? And Savannah, there's lots of love coming your way, and for anyone else out there who's feeling, feeling what Savannah, who's, what's, the, what's the phrase? Picking up what Savannah's putting down? Oh, I'm so old. Please know you are not alone, okay? You are not alone. And you don't have to be alone. Okay? And Prin's right. You're starting a journey. You're on a journey. It's your story to tell. Your life is your story, right? You can choose how you want to tell it. And be, yeah, be nice. So B's offering Savannah to connect with B to chat. Yeah. And Nikki. Hi, Nikki. Just listen silently today. Good to be part of something bigger than yourself. Thank you, dear Mary. Oh my, you do so much, well, much good as I can. Wish I could do more. And I don't know if it's good for everybody all the time. And Savannah, Carlos too, and for all the Savannas out there. I'm not sure if this helps, but sometimes parents don't have to be biological. We can find parents in role models, friends, local community, adapting our perception of parents. It can be tough. 
that you're seen. You are valid. You are not a burden and you're genuinely awesome. <laughs> you're not alone and you are valued here. Carlos, I couldn't agree more. Hmm. And Shelly, you're right. Sometimes when we ask for the help, <sighs> we don't always receive the kind of help that we want when we need it. It's not a reason to give up asking though. Not a reason to give up, right? Because one day, <laughs> and hopefully one day soon, the help you need will arrive just when you need it. Or that waiting list you're on will suddenly come to you. Or that person out there, that service that you've been waiting to connect with will somehow get through the backlog of emails that they've been working on and they will send you a message and reach out and they will be there. And hopefully you will be there to take advantage of it. We live, you know, the systems we live in, we know from talking today, right? They're imperfect. They're flawed. And humans, we are flawed too. We can't be everywhere as much as we want to be. But if you can, take a little bit from all the beautiful conversations that have happened today, all the beautiful moments, the words of compassion and support and care, the genuine care that's coming from community. Take what you need. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> and recognizing the people out there who can be there for you in a way that you need. And if you haven't found them yet, keep on searching. They are out there, right? And sometimes they'll change through life, right? That's okay. But knowing that you can reach out, knowing that they are out there somewhere, it's an important thing. <laughs> and be calling your sponsor and recovery program your sobriety dad. <laughs> yeah. You know, those, those folks, those... The people who care for us aren't always the people who were assigned the job when we came into this world, right? Just like any job, we change jobs and sometimes we're not good at the job we get and sometimes we learn how to do better at it and wow, there's a whole other metaphor going off there, but you know, it doesn't always have to be and it won't always be like it is right now. And there is support and care and compassion out there don't give up reaching for it. And don't give up on yourself because you're worth it. You're worth having that kind of stuff in your life because you matter. <sighs> Guys, folks, everyone, you're amazing. Thank you for being a part of this. Thanks for letting me take you a few minutes over time. You're great. Um, I appreciate you. And I look forward to connecting with you again real soon. This Friday morning, we have the coffee catch up at 9 a.m. if you're a morning person. If you're not, don't judge yourself for not being able to show up. And uh, reach out, connect. And yeah, if you live in a priority neighborhood in Oshawa, or if you've spent a long time living in a priority neighborhood in Oshawa and you know that neighborhood really well, feel free to fill out the survey. And when I say fill out, it's an audio survey, so you can also talk that survey. You can check out that link pinned to the top of our Facebook page. Thank you so much, everybody. You're amazing. Take care. Take care of yourselves. Love yourselves. Be excellent to one another. And I'll see you again soon. Bye, everybody. Oh, and Carlos, a lovely little thank you. P.S. Thanks so much for this. It's been awesome and a great space. Thanks to everyone that was here today, too. It was great to connect, whether in chat or in watching from the sidelines. Thank you for being here and for being you. Ditto. Bye everyone.